Hi guys, it's me, Carrie, and I'm just kind of in the mood to chat today, so if that's not the kind of videos that you're into, I totally understand if you want to skip this one, but if you don't mind hanging out and listening for a little while, then you're more than welcome to stay, you know, get comfy, grab a cold drink or a snack or whatever you feel like, and just listen to me ramble for a little while. Um, first of all, my hair is crazy, I'm sorry. I, after I got out of the shower, I braided it right away, and then I should have just left it in the braid, but I took it out, so now it's soaking wet and sort of wavy and whatever, but that is neither here nor there. Um, yesterday was a really, 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 really bad day for me, like the worst I've had in a long, long time, and it was depression and anxiety motivated, and if you guys are new here or this is your first time watching one of my videos, I've suffered from anxiety and depression my entire life. I am now 44 years old. I first was taken to a therapist when I was seven. Um, I've been on many antidepressants over the years, I believe five altogether. Um, I've also been on an anti-anxiety med for, I wanna say about six months now, in addition to my antidepressant. Um, I've done therapy on and off with at least a dozen therapists over the years, some that I only saw once or twice, some that I saw for extended periods of time, as in a year or two, or I think the longest I saw one was maybe, maybe three years. I honestly don't recall. I've been with my current therapist now. Uh, it'll be a year in November, I believe. So, um, yeah, I've, you know, I'm, I'm doing the best I can to be treated for it. Um, not having insurance for a large portion of the time of my life, <laughs> quite frankly. Uh, there have been periods of time where I've had absolutely no access to any help of any kind. I do live in the United States. We do not have universal health care, as you know very well if you live here or probably even if you don't. So it's kind of a haves or and have nots situation with people receiving assistance with medical issues, particularly mental health issues are kind of preca precarious in terms of being able to get assistance if you need it. Um, but yeah, I am currently under the care of a therapist. She is actually a social worker. She's not a psychiatrist or psychologist. She cannot prescribe meds. I get those through my general practitioner who's known me since I was about 12 years old. I have yet to find a psychiatrist who will accept my current health care, which is um, through Medicaid. Even the ones that say that they do don't return phone calls, so obviously it's not their preference. If they even do take it, they prefer not to, so that's been rough because I do think that perhaps the meds I'm on are maybe not the very best combination for me, although they're certainly better than nothing. But without seeing a psychiatrist, I can't really be evaluated for that, so it's the whole catch-22 thing. So I'd rather take what I've got than nothing at all. And my therapist is definitely helping me a lot. But yesterday, I just was on, I don't know, I was in this shame spiral. I just felt so much pressure, so much misery about where I am in my life. Um, I had commented in uh, a recent video that I don't work. It is not by choice. I certainly don't enjoy being useless and not having money. And someone made a really heartless, cruel, ignorant comment, basically saying, how dare you ask for donations from us when you don't work? And I guess what this person meant by donations was saying, I have a referral code for Kawaii Box, and if you'd like to use it and save $5, it'll also save me $5, so win-win. Apparently in their mind, because I don't have a job, I was somehow asking for donations. So needless to say, that comment was deleted, that commenter was blocked, because I don't need that kind of cruelty in my life and ignorance, to be quite honest. This person probably has never watched another video of mine in their entire lives. They watched one they heard the part they wanted to hear and they focused solely on that but yeah suffice it to say I would love more than anything to be able to hold down a job 
The last time I had a job was for four days in 2010 as a cashier in Publix in Florida in a grocery store. And each and every day I had what I would equate to a nervous breakdown. Each and every day I told my husband, please, 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 please don't make me go. I might run out in traffic rather than actually do this work because I was so afraid and the anxiety was so off the charts. And at this point in time, of course, I was on no meds and no psychiatrist, psychologist, therapist, any type of care. I couldn't even see a general practitioner unless I went to like the low cost, you know, clinic and waited, you know, six hours till they could see me. And this is not like a oh, woe is me pity party because I know a lot of you guys are in the same boat or may know people who are. This was just simply th that comment that that person made was a big part of what sent me on the shame spiral. Like, dude, seriously, you're right. It's my choice not to work. I sit on the freaking couch while people peel me grapes and I watch soaps all day, you know, while my servants come over and give me mani petties and clean my house screw you. You don't know the first thing about my life, so don't sit there and judge me. And second of all, I've never asked anyone for donations of any kind on this channel. If you use a referral link of mine to get a subscription box, guess what? The exact same thing that's in it for me is in it for you. So why would you want to pay full price for a Kauai box at 20 bucks when you can use my referral code and pay 15 And yes, then it gets me a $5 credit. I'm not going to lie. I'm not saying there's not something in it for me as well. But it's a win-win situation. It's certainly not me saying, oh, you know, I'm going to start a collection so you guys could buy me Kauai boxes to refer for you. I mean, I don't know. I don't even know why I'm giving that stupid ignorant comment any attention because it doesn't deserve any, but... It really, it just cut me to the core, and it was just so symptomatic of the way people treat many people, not all, many people treat people with mental illness, or any type of illness for that matter. I have friends with fibromyalgia, I have friends with lupus, I have friends with many, many other invisible diseases that are not always necessarily obvious to the naked eye who suffer greatly, and some of them can manage to hold down jobs, and some of them cannot. And some of them receive disability benefits and some of them, like myself, do not because I can't afford to hire an attorney and I don't have pages and pages and pages of documentation showing all of the therapists that I've seen because prior to the one I'm seeing now, I haven't seen a therapist since I was 25 years old. So you know what? No, I don't have a paper trail because that's, again, a catch-22. You're supposed to have a paper trail of all the proof of how sick you are with mental illness, but yet if you have mental illness and you don't work and you can't see a doctor, where the hell are you supposed to get the paper trail from? So anyway, that, that just upset me so much, way more than it should have. I'm hormonal. I think at that time of the month is coming really soon because I do typically get extra hormonal during that period of time. And I was just really volatile yesterday. I yelled at my husband. We fought about a lot of stupid nonsense just because I was being really snotty. And I feel terrible about that. He is bipolar, my husband. So, you know, we, we both go through a lot of similar ups and downs in our lives and in our mental health states. So it makes it easier in some ways because it's like an instant ally and an instant person who is always going to have compassion for you. But at the same time, if we're both in the bad place at the same time, you know, it could be really volatile and damaging to us both. So it was just a miserable, miserable, rotten day. And then this morning I woke up and I, I literally post on my Facebook page, please God, let today be a better day. I have to make it a better day because I can't do that again. And um, totally innocuous, absolutely not meant with any harm or ill will and certainly not even directed at me. But I saw a couple people post things about have having the best time with my hashtag bestie. Oh, I love my hashtag bestie, my bestie, my bestie, my bestie. And I just thought to myself, you know, I don't have a bestie. I have a lot of wonderful, wonderful friends. And don't get me wrong, I'm grateful for each and every one of you. But I don't have a bestie per se. I don't have someone that knows me inside and out and is the person that I turn to with every problem and I know will always have my back. I don't trust most of my friends completely and I don't think you should because I've been burned by so many people in my life. I trust far more than I should even now and I expect a lot more of people than I should even now because I'm 
I, I expect what I'm willing to give to other people. And I don't mean in terms of giving physically and financially. I mean in terms of emotional support. I will drop pretty much anything, anytime if a friend is in crisis. And I don't know how many people would actually do that for me. And it's not because they don't care about me. It's probably because they have other things going on in their lives or they assume that maybe I have someone else that's closer to me that will fill that role. And then I thought, you know what, but I do have a bestie. My husband is my bestie. My husband is the person that I share all my thoughts and feelings with. And just because, you know, he's not female doesn't make it any less of a best friendship. It's just that you don't write hashtag bestie about your spouse. You know, you write love or you write, you know, soulmate or partner or whatever. But in terms of a best girlfriend, I, I don't have one. I have so many women that I love, but... And it's not that I don't think of people as besties at different periods of time, but like if someone put a gun to my head and said, Carrie, name your bestie right now, other than my husband and possibly my mother on the right day, I wouldn't know who to pick. And I don't think that anybody put in the same situation would say, oh, well, Carrie's my bestie, because I don't think I am. I think, like my friend Laura said very eloquently on my Facebook page today, I don't just have a single bestie, I have many and you are one of them. And I said, you know, ditto you know I, I feel the same way about you but in terms of having one best friends like that I would put ever hashtag bestie after a photo I can't think of anybody and I can't think of anybody that would do that for me and for some reason that just really 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 just was like a gut punch to me and it hurt a lot and I, I know I have to get past it and I am mostly past it. And like I said, when I when the realization hit that my husband is my best friend, duh, you know, just because someone's your, your spouse doesn't mean they can't also be your best friend. I mean, that's kind of ideally what you want in a marriage, I would think. But, um, but it hurt. It hurt to know that in terms of bestie girlfriend, I don't really have one. And, I, and, and like a lot of people, I think, cling to past relationships and say that. Like, you know, oh, well, I've known her for 30 years, so she's my bestie. I don't think it matters how long you've known someone. I don't think it matters if you've met in person or not, or if you're just friends that communicate solely online or via mail or via the telephone. I mean, look at the freaking movie Beaches for Crying Out Loud. Those little girls met when they were, what, like 12? And then they didn't see each other for so long after that. They just grew their best friendship through actual male correspondence. And then it wasn't until years later that they reunited and they were like soulmates, sisters of the heart and loved each other till the very end. But you, it wasn't because they spent so much time together that they became best friends, you know? They literally spent like a day or a weekend together when they were little girls and they just picked up from there and got to know each other better as the years went on. And I know Beaches is a movie and whatever, but I'm like, I don't know, I just, I think a lot of people tend to go down that road and they think, oh, well, she's my bestie because I've known her the longest, or she's my bestie because she helped me through this one particular crisis in my life. But if you honestly sit and think about it, like really, really, really hard, like, is your bestie the person that to this day you think would drop anything for you and be at your side in a hot minute if you were in need? Or is your bestie someone that you've just called your bestie so long that it's just become a thing that you say about each other? I mean, I don't know. Maybe a lot of you do have besties, and if you do, that's great. And maybe it's possible to have more than one bestie, like my friend Laura said. I like the idea of that. I mean, I tend to call my female friends my heart sisters. That's just my terminology for it because it doesn't put anyone higher than anybody else. Are there people I feel closer to than others? Of course, but that can change at the drop of a dime. And just because I feel close to someone doesn't mean that they feel as close with me. Like I've had situations where um, I formed relationships with friends and I'm like all in pretty much right from the start. And they generally are not, you know, a lot of times with people, it takes years to nurture a relationship and get to the level of closeness that I'm at in 10 minutes. I meet you, I click with you, boom, you know, like 
that's it friends for life and for someone else it may be like no 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 I have people that I've known since I was six years old those are the people that I feel that way with not you that I've known for a year or whatever or six months or you know however long so I don't know I it's semantics I guess I mean because to me the word bestie doesn't mean anything more than a heart sister and I have many 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 heart sisters and they're precious to me each and every one of them and I turn to different ones for different things and different ones fill different roles and different needs in my life. And there are some that I'm okay with maybe talking to on the telephone once in a while. And there are many that I'm not at that level yet. I'm just not. Talking on the phone is terrifying to me. I hate it, to be honest, most of the time. But there are a handful of people where I've gotten past that hump for whatever reason or another. And... Um, and then that sometimes bites me in the ass too, because then I'll feel really comfortable, like, okay, someone's given me their phone number. That's a, like, that's a step beyond internet friends to me, like talking online. If someone gives you their phone number, it's like, okay, they want to actually talk to you. But then I've had cases where that's happened, and then I call the person, and I call the person, and I call the person, and I leave messages, and I leave texts, and I don't hear back for like months at a time. And it's hard not to take that personally. And, you know, sometimes people have said to me, you know, honey, you're just, you're too much all at once and I'm just not ready for it. Sometimes they've just dropped me completely. And that's the most heartbreaking thing of all, to just feel like with no explanation, suddenly you're out of somebody's life. I'm thinking of one person in particular and my husband keeps saying, you're not, like your friendship isn't over until she tells you your friendship is over. But to me, you talk on the phone, you email each other, and then for two years, you don't get a response to a phone, you know, to a voicemail or an email. I'd say that friendship is probably over, but you know, he's the eternal optimist and he knows it would break my heart to say, yep, she's past you, she's over you, she doesn't want to be bothered with you anymore. So, um, you know, so I have the internal battle of are we still friends or are we not friends? You know, should I keep trying once a year to shoot her an email and see if I get a response or is that just making me look pathetic and sad? So, I don't know. I'm just going on lots of tangents in this video. I knew I would. And I'm getting bitten by freaking mosquitoes again and flying gnats because my mother's backyard is infested and it's just disgusting and she won't get an exterminator to like spray out here. And I know there's only so much you can do outdoors, but I know when I lived in an apartment, an exterminator came and sprayed outside our apartment like once a month. So I know there are things ugh, that can be done. Gosh, these things are killing me. So I'm going to have to go in the house soon. Not because I want to, but because, this, you know, I think I'm going to take you guys inside with me now and see if I can finish this up in the house. Hopefully I don't mess this up. Let me hit pause and not stop. All right, guys, here we are. I'm back, and the light is bad because it's indoors and it's getting to be the evening, but I can't be getting 9,000 more mosquito bites in the backyard. And I really wasn't done talking yet, so I apologize that it's dark in here, but I just felt like talking some more. So um, definitely leave me some comments. I would just really be curious to hear your thoughts on some of these things. Um, do you have a bestie <laughs> or do you have several besties or do you not clarify, you know, classify your friends with terminology like that? Um, and I, I don't know, like if you don't have a bestie, does it bother you to see other people post things like that? Am I the only person that, that, that gets those pangs of jealousy and wonders like, well, why doesn't somebody love me the best of like all their friends? Why am I not their very most favorite friend? I mean, because that's, you know, a lot of that is my disease. And a lot of that is my insecurity, my anxiety, my depression, and lack of self-esteem in general. But um, I don't think most people at 44 are still as ruled by it or as affected by it as I am but if you are at any age I'd be curious to hear it and know that I'm not the only one that feels these stupid feelings and I shouldn't say they're stupid they're not stupid they're just not the same feelings everybody else has and that's okay I guess I just wish I had more positive feelings and not so many negative ones all the time but I do feel better today than I did yesterday in spite of the whole bestie debacle this morning um I went to the doctor, 
he, you know, asked me how I was doing on my meds because he just recently increased my, uh, my anti-anxiety med from, uh, from one pill to three pills, actually, um, about two months ago. So he wanted to check in and, you know, have me come in and discuss that. And I said, you know, other than yesterday, which was a huge irregular blip on the radar, I have for the most part been doing better. Although to be perfectly honest, I only remember to take the pills like twice a day, three times a day is so rare that I actually remember to do it. And sorry, I'm just going to be like obnoxiously scratching now because I swear to you, I guess just got at least three or four huge, huge bites just in the like 15 minutes I was talking to you guys. This sucks. Ugh. But anyway, I just need like to bathe in calamine lotion. And of course I don't have any in my house, but whatever. But all right, I'm going to shut up because now I'm just kind of going off on tangents and I don't need to anymore. But I just wanted to let you guys know how I've been feeling. And if you, you know, are going through some of the same struggles or have in your life, you know, let me know. I would definitely love to hear your thoughts. And I'm getting a stupid phone call from a spam number, as usual. Speaking of talking on the phone, I know that if I get a phone call and it's not a number I recognize, that it's solicitors. So I don't know why they insist on calling me even when I ask them and beg them and yell at them and scream at them not to call. They just continue to do it. It just stinks. Has that gotten a lot worse for you guys lately too? I think it's like a national thing for sure if not a global thing uh, like with more like robotic phone calls or however robo calls I think they're called um that you know a lot more solicitation is able to be gotten away with in the whole do not call registry that they had here in the U.S. is just crap because now with these robo calls it doesn't do anything to prevent them but anyway it was not a number I knew so clearly it was not someone that knows me and I was not going to interrupt you guys to yell at some idiot calling me. But anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I hope this had some resonance with you or is something that you can maybe relate to, even though it always makes me sad when people can relate to my sad feelings because I don't want anyone else to feel sad. It's obviously nice to know that, you know, I'm not alone in my thoughts and my feelings and that there are other people out there that get where I'm coming from. So like I said, definitely leave comments. Um, I will ask it. It probably doesn't matter. If somebody wants to be horrible, they'll be horrible. But please leave them. Please leave nice comments. <laughs> Only because the negative ones are always are going to get deleted and you will be blocked because I don't have time for that in YouTube or in life. I really don't. Life is way too short. I've lost too many people young in my life to not realize that. So anyway, all right, shutting up now for reals. Thanks for listening, guys. I love you, and I'll be back soon with more stuff. Bye.